we'll see in just a minute that a particular electron configuration of a particular atom may have many different term symbols associated with it. And the question we want to ask here is which term symbol represents the lowest energy? What one uses is the new version of Hund's rule. Remember from introductory chemistry we used Hund's rule to build up the periodic table using the Aufbau principle. Now let's sort of review that. What we did was we uh, drew out energy levels starting with the lowest energy which is the 1s, then we had the 2s, then we had the 2p, then we had the 3s, and then we had the uh, 3p, then we had the 4s, and then we had the 3d, we had this sort of configuration. And the Aufbau principle said, all right, we're going to build up the periodic table. So there's hydrogen and there's helium. So you put two electrons in there. And then there's hydrogen, helium, lithium. There's ber beryllium, a uh, stupid pen. There's uh, hydrogen, helium, lithium, uh, beryllium. And then we had uh, boron, so, so far so good. Now when we got to carbon, carbon had six electrons, we have a choice of where to put that second electron in the 2p. We can put it, for example, here, or we can put it down here, or we can put it up here, or down here, or up here. We have lots of different choices. Well, that's where Hun's rule came in. Hun's rule said that what you do is you don't pair up electrons unless you have to. You put the electron in another degenerate orbital. These are degenerate. And so, and we also put it so that the spins are parallel. So Hun's rule, call this version 1.0 from introductory chemistry, place electrons with parallel spins if possible. So that's why we put them up like this. Now we have Hun's rule <laughs> version 2.0. All right, so actually the first Hun's rule, here it is, highest S. And again, what we've done here, S, this represents the sum intrinsic spins. L represents the sum of orbital spin and J then represents the coupling of S and L. So now we have S and the Hun's rule version 2.0 is just another fancy name for Hun's rule version 1.0. Let's look at here. Let's look at the P orbital and our choices for the P orbital. Here's the P orbital. Our choices are to put it here or here or we can put it here or here or we can put it here and here. If we look at the value of s, total value of s for this, this is 0. Total value of s here is 0. Total value of s here is 1. And if we have them parallel we get a higher value of s and Hun's rule, first one, highest value of s, just a fancy way of saying that the pin spins have to be parallel, which is what we stated without proof in introductory chemistry. Another way to say that, the highest value of s, so parallel spins, is the same thing as saying largest value of s, and that is also the same thing as saying the highest multiplicity. Parallel spins, largest S, highest multiplicity, that's Hund rule number one, which we learned in introductory chemistry. Now let's look at highest L. What does that mean? Well, let's again look at carbon, our nice friendly carbon, 2P. We'll have three, okay. We said Hund rule number one is we're going to have a parallel spin. But we can put a parallel spin here, or we can put a parallel spin here where remember these are different values of m sub l is uh, minus one, zero, and plus one. So which one of these is the lowest energy? Well Hun's rule says take the highest value of l, the highest value of the combined angular momentum. And recall that the combined angular momentum is different for these two cases. Let's look at l. L here is a minus 1 and 0. The total value there, L is 1. But here, L is 0. 
So the largest value of L here would be, let's actually look at this. Oh, look, if we put them both here or both here, here L would be equal to 2 and L would be equal to 2. So that means that the Hun's rule, first you do this, and then once you have the highest value of S, then you figure out what the highest value of L is. So this will give you a singlet, um, S here, S here is 1, S here is 1, S here is 0 and 0. So these are automatically out by Hun's rule, the first Hun's rule. We have to satisfy that first. Then if we have a tie, here's the tie, the break, the tiebreaker there is get the highest value of L. So this will give us the highest value of L. So we get M sub L minus one and another electron and the M sub L equals zero. And then if that doesn't resolve it, if there are two uh, ways of arranging the electron, so you have the highest L, then the final ultimate tiebreaker is the lowest value of J with less than a half filled shell or the highest value of J if you have more than a half filled shell. What do we mean by half filled? For instance here 2P, this is only half filled or less than half filled. Half filled would be three electrons, less than half would be two. More than half will be more than three electrons here. Here you'd have four electrons, one would have to be paired up. So those are Hund's rules and you could use Hund's rules if a particular uh, atom has different term symbols. You can use Hund's rule to determine which term symbol represents the ground state of that atom. Note that Hund's rule applies only to the ground state you can't use Hund's rule once you determine the ground state to determine the next higher excited state.